Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This video tutorial is for students who are starting to get to the back end of Algebra 2 Goal 1. We want to go over some more Algebra 1 material and specifically we're going to be talking about lines again. So a ba uh, lot of basic stuff first and then we start getting into more and more material. So first things first, easiest of easy, graphing a line in the form of y equals mx. In other words, you have the slope, but conveniently there is no plus b question mark, which means that there is no y-intercept, which means you start and default to zero. And then slope, as always, is going to be, not over two, Ms. Dubois, over one. So if you recall, slope from the prior video is going to be rise over run. So in this case, we're going to be going up two over one. Up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. You don't have to draw this many. Again, the software is actually nice to you and you have the capacity to... No, my computer just doesn't want me to draw lines today. Okay. Uh, your computer can make the lines, but I don't, so I have to do it the long way. Again, 2 over 3, so there is my rise, and there is my run. So I'm going to start at 0, go up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, and there is my straight line. All right. Well, what if we get something a little bit more nuanced? See, now we have a B, we have a Y-intercept. So in this case, we're starting at negative seven, so that's going to be there. So you always start with your Y-intercept, because that tells you your first point. You're just looking along the Y-axis and saying, oh, negative seven, boom, there it is, huzzah, happy days. Now here, they are trying to trick you very badly because there's nothing in front of that X. What the heck is going there? But what that is, is an invisible, invisible one. So that means one over one, which means we go up one over one, up one over one, and so on and so forth down the line. And that literally down the line, you make the line. Here, you'll start with your y-intercept first, which is going to be at negative two. And then your slope is negative two over one, our first negative slope of the video. That means you're going to be going down two, over one, because negatives mean you're going to be going in a negative direction, which in this case on the vertical axis is going to be down. Down two over one, down two over one. And there is your line. Not much in the way of nuance, but we're looking pretty good. Okay, now let's get really kind of cool. Hey, all right, but this is again, all three of these topics, you're doing the exact same thing. You're starting with your y-intercept, so for this first one that's negative two, and then you're using your slope. It's negative, so we're going to go down 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. Down 2, over 3. And there is your line with very little muss and very little fuss. Over here, our y-intercept again for the second time is going to be negative 2. The computer just seemed to like that when I was doing my screen grabs. And we have a negative slope again, only now it's 1 half. So we go down 1, over 2, down 1, over 2. And suddenly, boom, without much thought, no muss, no fuss, there is your line. And then if we decide to go on the other side of the spectrum and try to make it even easier again, y equals 7. Now I've seen kids either get this or they don't. It tends to be a, a one or the other thing. But let's think about what this means. This means every opportunity in the universe where your y is negative 7. So for example, 0, negative 7, 1, negative 7, 2, negative 7, 3, negative 7. And suddenly you realize what's actually happening is you are creating with my computer lagging, a horizontal line. Well, what about this one? X is negative 6. So negative 6, 0, negative 6, 1, negative 6, 2, negative 6, 3. And then, oh, look, funny that, we actually have a vertical line that's being made now with my computer lagging as it is. And now that's what you need to remember. X is your vertical. Y is going to be your horizontal. Let's see if my computer can catch up without wiggling out of control. Horizontal. It actually made it. I'm shocked. Okay. Next up. Finding intercepts of the given line. Okay. So this is asking for two things. It is going to be asking for your x-intercept and it's going to be asking for your y-intercept. Computer, why are you slowing down? I haven't done anything remotely hard yet. I'm not doing DSA topics here. Come on. All right, so what you're doing, for your x-intercept, what we're going to do is we're just going to visually cross out your y, 
And now we have an equation, 9x, computer, 9x equals 14. Well, okay, if 9x equals 14 and we're looking for the intercept, then what do we do to actually solve it? Divide by 9, divide by 9. That makes the 9s disappear, and now x equals this, 14 over 9. So your intercept is going to be 14 over 9. Well, what if we wanted to find the y-intercept? Well, instead of covering up the x, we're going to cover up the y. If we go through, or no, I said that backwards. Instead of covering up the y, we're going to cover up the x. So what are we left with? Negative 7y equals 14. Divide by negative 7. Divide by negative 7. What do we have once the computer catches up? 14 divided by negative 7, come on computer, you can do it, is negative 2. And that's going to be our x, our y-intercept here, negative 2. Come on computer, catch up. There we go. Same thing is going to be happening over here. You're going to have an x intercept and you're going to have a y intercept. You're going to take one of them, cover it up. So for yuck yucks, let's do the y intercept first. So we're going to cover that up. 7y equals negative 15. Come on computer. Divide by 7, divide by 7. So therefore our y intercept is going to be negative 15 over 7. Okay, so far so good. What if we're looking for our x-intercepts? That means it's the y that we're covering up. So 2x equals negative 15. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So that is going to be negative 15 over 2 unless my computer catches up. So it's negative 15 over 2. Oh, okay. So far so good. Like we're kind of burning through these. It's almost like we did this before. Because we did in Algebra 1. So, the y-intercept is 9, hopefully you'll hear my parking lot outside, the x-intercept is 9, and then there's your line. No muss, no fuss. Then graph a line whose y-intercept is 5, and whose x, nope, I did that wrong. y-intercept means to block, pay attention, what are you doing? y-intercept is 5, and then the x-intercept is negative 1. Boom, there's my line. No muss, no fuss. We'll go through one more. Uh, let's see here, given the line below, and then find first the x and y intercepts. So now here, this is similar to what they were doing um, up here where you're looking for your intercepts, only now they are expecting you to find the intercepts on a graph. And to their benefit, they actually give you numbers that divide evenly. So x-intercept first, negative 6, x equals negative 15, divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6, and Ms. Dubois immediately lied because this does not divide evenly. How dare it? How dare it? Okay, so x equals double negative is a positive. 15 over 3 simplifies because they're both divisible by 3, so 5 over 2. Okay, so 2 and a half. Oh, okay, we can do that. Beep. There we go. Next up, now we want to cover up the other one. So 3y equals negative 15. Divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals negative 5. Now we just got to wait for the computer to catch up to everything I just wrote. And then there is our y-intercept, and there is our line. Okay? Now we're going to do it again. So 2x equals 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 4. That's our first intercept. Our x-intercept is going to be 4. And then we have negative y equals 8, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, y equals negative 8, which is not what I wrote, I don't think. I did write it, okay. Negative 8 is this number right here, and there is our, make it, come on computer, there's our line. Not so bad. So this one very similar to the one we did up here, not so bad. Now. Writing an equation. So, hey, they finally chased away the graphs for a second. So, writing it in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form, if you do not recall, is y equals mx plus b. So, to remember which is which, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. We were doing that at the beginning of the video, a 10 whole minutes ago. So, if you're looking for y equals mx plus b, 
y equals mx plus b. Our answer is going to look like that format, and half of it they've already given it to us. y equals negative 2 thirds x, but there's something that's missing because we don't know what the y-intercept is. Well, very conveniently, they give you an x and a y. So our y equals negative 2 thirds x plus b. And now we just wait for the computer to catch up because God forbid it write as fast as I do. Okay. This can simplify. You can do it in the calculator if you want, but Ms. Dubois is going to do 9 divided by 3, which is 3, and then 6 times negative 2 is negative 6, and then there's our answer. And now add 6, add 6, b equals 1, plus 1. There is our equation. That's going to be our final answer that we're inputting into the software. And it's that setup for all of these. So we know that for this one it's going to be y equals 4 thirds x something. We just got to figure out what the something is. So what's the y that they gave us? 6 equals 4 thirds times negative 9 plus b. And now we just wait for the computer to actually catch up and work at the speed of Ms. Dubois. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 times 4 is going to be 12. So negative 12 plus b. Plus 12 plus 12 wait for the computer to make up its darn mind and do what I'm actually doing and apparently not write everything I wrote. 6 and 12 is 18 is our B, so plus 18 is going to be our answer. And that's how this particular topic is done. This is one of those topics where students are very challenged by it until I actually point out how easy it actually is. And then Let's see here, writing an equation given the y-intercept and another point. Again, they're handing it to you on a silver platter, trying to make it as easy as possible. y equals mx plus b. That's the whole point. What's the b? Negative 2, because that is the y-intercept. Okay, what's the slope? What are we tracing over here? y-intercept is negative 2, so we go up 2, up 1, 2, and then how far... Oh, Computer, what are you doing? And then how far over do we go? We go over 6. So that's up 2 over 6. So um, 2 over 6 simplifies to 1 third. So y equals 1 third x minus 2. And now we just wait for the computer to make up its darn mind and do what I tell it to. That was a terribly written equal sign, but you know, what can you do? Over here, y equals mx plus b. Come on, computer. Stop causing me frustration. Okay, so what's our b here? Our b is negative 1, so y equals something x minus 1. Okay, what's our something? Well, what's our rise and what's our run? Our rise, we go from negative 1 all the way up to 7, so we jumped 8, and then we go over 2. 8 over 2, rise over run. Rise of 2, run of Right, rise of 8, rise of 8, run of 2, 8 over 2, 8 over 2 simplifies to 4, 4x plus 1. That's what this collection of topics are doing, and they're going to be doing it for basically kind of the low-key the entire uh, family. So now let's turn off these topics and open up a new set. All right, so find the equation of the line below. And this is where things start to get tricky, because you'll notice there's the y-intercept, but that's not a nice, round, easy number to find. Goodness, golly, gee, no. So this is one where your y-intercept is actually a fraction. Dun-dun-dun! The horror, the horror. So what they're expecting us to do here is to use some of our more earlier Algebra 1 skills. So when we're looking at this, first things first, we want to find the slope because, again, y equals mx plus b because it's not like I haven't written that enough times over the course of this video. So you can already tell we're going down and then we're going over. So we know that this is going to be a negative slope. So how far do we go? We start at 3 and then stop at 5. So we're going down 8. We're starting at 4 and we're stopping at 2, so 6. 8 over 6 simplifies um, 
So that's 8 over 6, which is going to be 4 over 3. Okay, so negative 4 over 3x. And now we got to figure out what in the name of this widget is the y-intercept, the horror, the horror, except they gave you a point and you know how to did it, do it because you just did it. So with that in mind, any mini mini well, I'm going to choose this one just because I already have an arrow to it because lazy. So what's the coordinate here? That's negative 4 comma 3, negative 4 comma 3. So y equals mx plus b, that's the whole point. So we have a y, we have a 4 thirds, we have an x that I'm already doing the multiplication for in my head, which is a mistake. So that's negative 4 and then plus b. Okay, so 4 times 4 is 16, so 3 equals negative times a negative is a positive 16 over 3 plus b. And I have to minus 16 thirds from 3? Lord in heaven, why are you challenging my brain like this? I secretly love you. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. 3 over 1, so that's going to be 9 over 3. 9 minus 16 is negative 7 over 3. And I know all of you just said, no way, miss, I'm doing it on my calculator, so I'm not even bothering to explain. All right, so next one. We need to remember they didn't give us a graph like they did over here, so what's the formula for slope? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, now that everything is labeled. Negative 1 minus negative 5 over 3 minus negative 5, double negative, double negative. You know this from a prior video. So 5 minus 1 is 4, 3 plus 5 is 8, which is 1 half. So y equals 1 half x something. Now we got to figure out the something. Well, gee, we know how to do that. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Remember, which one do you feel like using? So negative 5 equals 1 half negative 5 plus b. Okay, just wait for the computer to catch up as always. So negative 5 equals, that's 5 over 1, so negative 5 over 2 plus b. And now we got to add 5 halves, add 5 halves, which is going to be, Ms. Dubois, use your mental math. So that's going to be 5, which is 10. So negative 10 and 5 is 5. Okay, so this is going to be minus 5 halves. Hey, funny that. And yes, I know all of you used your calculators. Don't worry. I forgive you for now. <laughs> all right. Now, finding slopes of a line parallel and perpendicular. First, we got to define what these words are, especially because you're using them all over chapter two of geometry. So how do we go through this? Parallel is exactly what it means. You probably did this in middle school. Parallel means lines that never meet. Perpendicular means lines that meet at a right angle. And you can actually figure out what they look like in their slopes because parallel will have the same slope. Computer, please write what I'm writing. Don't, don't, what are you doing? Computer. There, good computer. All right, so parallel means the same slope. Perpendicular, we're going to give it a fancy math word, and then we're going to explain what the fancy math word is. The fancy math word is opposite, opposite, reciprocal, reciprocal. Please tell me I spelled that right. I can't spell to save my life. Reciprocal, reciprocal, reciprocal. I think that's right. Basically, what this means is you're doing two things. You are going to flip two things. You are going to flip your sign, and you are going to flip your fraction. Fraction. And now we just wait for the computer to catch up. Your fraction. Okay. So what we need now is we have to go through, is this written in y equals mx plus b format where you know what the slope is automatically? No. Do we know how to do the algebra to make it work? Yes. So 9x plus 5y equals 8 minus 9x, minus 9x, because we want to go through the algebra necessary to get y by itself. So 5y equals negative 9x plus 8. And then once that's written in a way that I can actually read it, catch up, computer, come on. That's, uh, 
divide by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5. There we go. I see the slope. I don't know if any of you guys can see it. It's right there, negative 9 fifths. So what's parallel? Negative 9 fifths. That's nice and easy. What's perpendicular? First we're going to flip the sign, then we're going to flip the fraction. So positive 5 ninths is our perpendicular slope. Do it again. So 5x minus 4y equals negative 7. We want to do the algebra necessary to get y by itself. So we're going to minus 5x minus 5x line negative 4y equals negative 5x minus 7. And now I wait for the computer to catch up. My god, it caught up. Good computer. Negative 4, negative, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. And there it is. I see it. The negatives are canceling each other out, but there is my slope. 5 over 4. And since it's parallel, I can just copy and paste it. And since it's perpendicular, flip the sign and then flip the fraction. And suddenly it's like, oh, actually this isn't too bad. I'm, I'm okay with this. I dig it. Now, uh, they try to make you suffer. Because now we're going to do all of those topics we were just doing all in one go. So now we're looking in, I'm looking at this and realizing, good God, Mr. Blood, did I give myself enough space for this? So parallel is the easier one of the two because we're not changing the slope at all. And we are given the point. And so we're using a y equals mx plus b. So they gave us the y. We know the slope. They gave us an x, catch up computer, and we're looking for the y-intercept. Good computer. All right, so again, they're not being nice to us because that does not divide evenly because that's going to be negative 81 over 7. What the heck is 3 plus 81 over 7? God save me. All right, so plus b equals 3, and then it's plus 81 over 7. So 3 times 7 is 21. 21 plus 81 is 102 over 7. I'm not even going to try to figure that out. So y equals 9 over 7x plus 102 over 7. What a god-awful mess that is. Isn't that annoying? But, I mean, all of it is work we've been doing for like a billion topics now. On how many minutes in and we've been doing the same thing over and over? For this one, same thing. Let me block it off a little bit. But it's only now we're instead of doing 9 over 7, we have the opposite reciprocal, which means we flip our sign and we flip our fraction, and therefore our slope is going to be negative 7 over 9. So y equals negative 7 over 9x something. Computer, what are you doing? I know you're an 8-year-old dinosaur, but please catch up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have the y. We have the negative 7 over 9 times 9 plus b. Now this one at least is nice to us because this one does divide evenly. 9 divided plus b, computer. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 1 times uh, negative 7 is negative 7 plus b. So we add 7, add 7, cancels out. b equals 10 plus 10. And now we wait for the computer to catch up. And somehow that's legible. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. Given that my computer is starting to show that it's dinosaur age, I'm going to put this next example on pause. And I know that like 90% of you are going to skip this. I live in the real world. All right, next up, drawing a graph, draw, writing an equation and drawing this graph to model a real world equation. Okay, this is one where it's the love part of the love-hate relationship with the software. Because it's a word problem, the language is very fixed. And since you're seeing the same words in the same place, you don't have to read as much. So for example, let T represent the temperature. I already know. I have Y equals MX plus B, right? The first letter they give you, that's going to be my Y. T equals. And now i got to look for my keywords. Let's see here. They tell you in bold underline italics decreases, so you know you're going to have some subtraction. And then there is your all-purpose keyword for multiplication, for slope, for variable, for so many things. Whenever you see for each, for every, or per, that's your variable. So minus 3 degrees for per h. And then all we need now is our starting amount. What's our starting amount? 
20. T equals 20 minus 3H. And then the screen gram would not let me get it for some reason, but they're going to give you a graph and then you just have to graph from there. So you plot your first point at 20 because that is the Y intercept. And since your slope is three, you will go down one, two, three over one, and that would be your line. And that's all you would need to do. Over here, same idea. So G equals number D something. That's what we're looking for. So now we've got to figure out which number goes where. We have two numbers. We have the 18 gallons, um, and then the car uses up, uh, let's see here, uses up one gallon of gas for every 30 miles. That's tricky. Again, I tried to find the ones that gave you tricky. So you're using up one gallon of gas because when you're looking at your graph, when you're looking at your graph, gas is what you're measuring. So one mile is used up for every 30 gallons. And moreover, it's going to be subtraction again because it's left in this tank. You're using it up, so it's negative 1 over 30. Negative 1 over 30D. And then how much gallons do you have? The 18. So what would your graph actually look like if my computer could draw a friggin' straight line and not drive me stress? Computer. Okay, and then, good computer. So you would start at your 18, and then you would go down one, and then over 30. And that's what the slope of your line would look like. There we go. Next up, application of, uh, nope, Ms. Dubois hates this topic. Application with linear, nope, Ms. Dubois hates this topic. You know it's bad when the trained math teacher actively tells you there are two topics I don't expect you to do. Just keep that in mind and bow and say graces for the favor I just did you, okay? This last one for the uh, round of families of this topic is actually, it's not mission critical for goal one, but holy God, will you see it in goal two? So better to get, over, get it over with now. For those of you who have good mental math skills, this one can go by kind of fast. If not, you have to do it out the long way. And for the benefit of you, those students who aren't good at mental math, I will do this out the long way. So first things first, what you need is you need to plug these variables into each of your equations and make it true for both of them. The minute you find a no for one of these, you fill in no automatically as your answer. So first things first is four equal to eight times uh, one minus four. So I just took this and I plugged it into my first equation. So, uh, wow, Ms. Dubois, what was that? There's your very, there's your parentheses. So eight times one is four equals eight minus four, four equals four. So this looks like a yes so far. Let's double check. Now we gotta plug it into the other one. So negative three times one plus two times four equals five. Is that true once my computer catches up? Let's see here, negative three plus eight equals five, and yes, five equals five. So this one, once my computer catches up, is a yes. And now we just gotta wait. Do, 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 do. Oh, done, okay. So next up, what do we have? Negative four, so negative four, is that equal to eight times zero minus four? Yes, it is, so so far it's a yes. Because eight times zero is zero, so negative four equals negative four. So far, so good. Now let's try for the other one. Negative three times zero, uh, let's see here, plus two times negative four equals five. Let's see if we get that once my computer catches up. Mostly legible. Maybe plus, that's a plus, and that's a two. Okay, three times zero is zero. Two times negative four is negative eight. And does negative eight equal five? No, this is a no. Next up, does five equal eight times negative three minus four? I can already tell at a glance that's going to be a no because eight times negative three is negative 24, and there's no version of that that will get me a positive five. So this is a no. And this is where mental math starts to become a factor. 
But if you want to do it the long way, that's negative 24 minus 4. So does 5 equal negative 28? And the answer is heck no. Next up, does negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2 times 5 equal 5? Let's find out. Negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be 9. And then plus 2 times 5, which is going to be 10. Does that equal 5? 19 does not equal 5, so that is a no. And that's what they're looking for you to do for this last series of topics. Let's look over here. New one. So what do we have? One and four. Oh, again. Cool. Okay. So two times one minus five times four. Does it equal four? Two times one is two. Five times four is 20. Does that equal four? Two minus 20 is negative 18. Does that equal four? No. And the minute I found a no, that means I can put um, 18 equals, there you go, Mr. Blah. The minute I knew it was a no, I don't need to bother with the other one. Next one. Let's see here. 2 times negative 8 minus 5 times negative 4 equals 4. Let's see if that works. So that is going to be 2 times 8 is negative 16 plus 20 equals 4. 4 equals 4. So this looks like a yes so far. Okay, now let's plug it into the other one. Let's see here. So negative 3 times negative 8 plus 2 times, um, um, I lost my train of thought, negative 4, and does it equal 5? And I didn't give myself enough space. Ah. So negative times a negative is a positive. So 3 times 8 is 24 minus 8. Does that equal 5? 24 minus 8 is 16, which does not equal 5. So this is a no. Okay. Next up, 0. So 2 times 0 minus 5 times negative 7. Does that equal 4? 5 times negative 7 is 35. Does that equal 4? That's a no, and I don't have to bother with the other one because as soon as I find one no, I know automatically that it's a no. Next up, we have 2 times negative 3 minus 5 times negative 2, and does that equal 4? 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 5 times negative 2 is a uh, positive 10 equals 4, so 4 equals 4. So this leans towards a yes, so now we got to plug it in for the other one. So negative 3 times negative 3 plus 2 times negative 2, does it equal 5? Did I give myself enough space, and is it going to be legible? Almost. 3 times 3, that's going to be positive 9, and then negative 2 times 2 is minus 4 equals 5, uh, so 5 equals 5. So very finally, at last, the last one is a yes. So we just did a metric mountain of topics. My highlighting all got erased. But look at all of the topics we've done and all of them are dealing with the same thing. All of them deal with graphing in some way, shape, or form. They're getting you used to how to read a graph, how to read a line. You know, already know from the prior video all about slope and how it gets worked out. So everything here, this is, if you look at it compared to the Algebra 1 topics, this is basically like three chapters of Algebra 1 that you have just done in this one small collection of chapters. You just did chapters 3, 4, and a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of 5. That is impressive for one family of math, and that gives you an idea of what some of the math is going to be like in Algebra 2 and how they expect you to kind of pick up information as you go. But for now, once my computer finally catches up with what everything that I've been doing, that is everything for this particular goal, or this particular goal, sure, this particular topic. Next thing after this, we're going to start looking at some DSA questions. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one.